Alright, okay, we're reverting back because this bullshit right here, the enemy wasn't better. The enemy wasn't better! The enemy was lucky! I'm so fucking mad, this is the fourth time I failed this fucking mission. We're gonna talk about that. This won't be a topic on Nate Talks. I'm so angry at it. You have no idea. Ah! I really am, like, I want to punch something. I want to punch something. Because every single time, like, I have not lost because, like, I suck. I haven't lost because I made a bad decision. I lost because the game RNG'd me out. And it's so fucking infuriating. It's like the very first time I lost. Uh, the first, actually, no, you know what I've only, no, well, I have lost this map more than four times, actually. Uh, but it's because I have to keep resetting. Because <laughs> Astrid keeps fucking die. The bottom left kit right there, uh, that's in the green little blinking icon thing. She keeps fucking dying. Um, and it's because she's a recruitable character, but she starts at level one. Like, this is, I think, about a third of the way through a game, the game, maybe a little bit more. And she starts at level one, so pretty much all of the enemy soldiers in the game one-shot her. So, if an enemy soldier can get to her and attack her, she's probably dead. So I've had to reset a couple times, because the only other way... Uh, you can't reposition the character that you need to use to recruit her. So the only way to do it is to basically waste a bunch of other characters' turns using this feature called Shove. And they have to, like, outweigh... So only certain characters can do it because they have to be able to actually push the character. So, like, the actually all of the characters on the screen right now that you can see can't actually push this character. None of them are big enough. So I basically have to waste the turns of three dudes in order to shove Ike to a spot where he can actually manage to walk to Astrid, speak to her and recruit her, and then I can move Astrid to safety. But that's wasting three turns right there. That's wasting three other turns that I don't really want to waste because I want to be able to get around to the map. I want to be able to get all the treasure chests. I want to be able to kill things, get experience and whatnot. So it's a waste of turns. And so I've had to reset a couple times when she gets killed right off, right out the gate. But there's been three times now, this is the third time, that I have had to reset basically when it's over. Like one or two turns away from being over. As you can see, this map is basically cleared right now. So the first two times were the fault of Wonderful Boyd. I guess the first time was more my fault. I put him uh, within range of, a, of an enemy with a sword called the Killing Edge, which greatly enhances your critical hit chance. And uh, so he got critical hit and he died. So I guess that one was entirely my fault. But the second time was the exact same scenario. This dude right there, you see the red circle above the knight looking guy. That's an enemy. He is an archer that has this ability, I don't know exactly what it's called, but basically it allows him to get an extra shot off. So he can potentially attack up to four times per turn if that pops twice. Because he can attack thanks to the fact that this character has rescued somebody, his speed is greatly lowered. So this guy was able to get two attacks off on me. No problem, right? He has 36 HP. He's only doing 11 damage per hit to this character. It's no problem, whatever. Shoot me. I don't care. So he hits him once. The special ability pops off. He hits him again. He's down to 22. Ah, oh, whatever. He's only going to get to 33. RNG, RNG pops off again and gives him a critical hit. So that's two RNG-based procs in the same exact fight. That was the only possible way he was going to get that kill. And it procs, and it got it. Welcome to motherfucking Fire Emblem. And it was the same exact thing that happened to Boyd the second time that caused me to fail this map the second time. He came up, he attacked, Boyd's perfectly fine, but he pops his skill. And because of that third attack, now he's able to kill Boyd, and Boyd fucking dies. And then for that to happen, like I thought out of everybody, as you can see, Os for those of you that know Fire Emblem, Oscar right now is a promoted unit. He is my highest, he is my strongest character, my highest leveled character, so I thought, out of anybody, for sure, this dude is the one that's going to be safe. No questions asked, no other thought given to it. Oscar's going to be fine. Nope! Welcome to Fire Emblem, motherfucker! I'm so goddamn pissed. You have no idea, because I've spent, I think, like, given how long this map usually takes, how many, you know, you have to wait for enemy turns. As you can see, those little icons that are on certain things that look like a person, that means they've rescued a unit. There are uh, allied units that you can't control 
and basically if I don't rescue them, if I don't use that feature, they're just going to run around and get themselves killed, and I don't want to do that. Or they're going to steal kills, which means less experience for my dudes that I'm trying to level up. That's also a bad thing. So basically allowing them to do whatever the fuck they want is just a negative all around. And so, yeah, to say I am mad is an understatement, because I have not lost a single, like, I have not had to reset the game a single time up until this map, and now to have to reset it so many times, it's just, oh my god, it's killing me, and I'm fucking, I'm so mad, so I just had to have that as part of the feature, because, uh, plus, to begin with, I don't actually really have that much to talk about, because it's like, last week was E3, what's left to really talk about? Nothing. Actually, you know what, I do have uh, one thing saved over in the Nintendo World Championships. Wow, those were boring. Like, I have to admit, that was a pretty dull, uh, thing. Because, like, Splatoon looks like... Okay, so basically, for those of you that don't know what the Nintendo World Championship is, I have no idea why you wouldn't, since that thing has, like, millions of views by now. Uh, but basically, the Nintendo World Championship was a group of people. There were, I think, half of the participants, like, won, uh, events at best, certain Best Buys around the United States. And then the other half of the participants were just people that were selected to take part. So, uh, there were, like, popular YouTubers, um, just, you know, popular personalities that are in some way, shape, or form attached to video games. And so, they played a variety of games in kind of, you know, like a, an elimination tournament kind of style. And I'm trying to remember what all the games were. There was... Splatoon was the first one. I believe Legend of Zelda was the first elimination game. Then, what the fuck was it called? I still have to look at it. Blast Ball, which I believe Blast Ball has now been uh, officially announced as Metroid Prime Federation Force, which let's not even talk about that. Everybody knows the catastrophe that has been the announcement of Metroid Prime Federation Force. Um, but then it was that, and what was, I can't remember, oh, it was Balloon Flight Fight? I think it was Fight Balloon Fight was the second elimination thing. Then Smash Brothers, and I cannot remember what the game was after that, but the final game was Super Mario Maker, and out of all of those, the only one that I actually found, like, particularly engaging and interesting was Super Mario Maker. That was the only interesting part, like, Splatoon, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to shit on Splatoon, because I know that's, like, a really beloved game. It looks incredibly fun to play. Not terribly exciting to watch. And what the fuck is happening? Why are you blinking at me? Don't blink at me, screen. That probably didn't happen on the capture. Anyway, um, so, yeah, so, like, all the way up until Super Mario Maker, it was just like, eh, because they were playing Smash Brothers. There was one dude who's, like, one of the guys that made it to the finals, I believe, is an actual Smash tournament player. But everybody else had no clue what they were doing, and they had items turned on. Like, it was just a massive clusterfuck that really was not that fun to watch. Uh, and so, yeah, so, like, they were just, they were kind of just boring all around up until Super Mario Maker, where it really was like, wow, this is actually really fun, these levels are clever, they're interesting, uh, it actually got exciting. It didn't help that during Splatoon they brought out this, like, eight-year-old kid, which, I mean, I get it. It's the child of one of the announcers, he wants to get the child involved in shit, but, like, this is an eight-year-old kid. They can't do commentary, just leave it alone, please, like, it was so, I just wanted to, like, throw something at him the entire, I know, I, it's also because I am very, very, uh, I, I don't want to say biased, because bias isn't really the right term, but I'm, I'm very nitpicky when it comes to commentary, I am very, uh, I will go overboard regarding my dislike of certain styles of commentary and certain kind of things that occur on commentary that's why like yeah I, there's no reason to really get into it but suffice to say commentary is one of those things where it's just kind of like i expect quality when it comes to something on the stage of the nintendo world championships and to have that basically ripped away because somebody wanted their kid to have you know their minute of sunshine is ridiculous and it kind of it that also kind of ruined it for me and so you know i'm being a bit harsher than i probably should but it's still just like that was so unnecessary and ultimately i think it really hurt the entire production but let's talk about the things that actually really you know that isn't just opinion based that really legitimately hurt the production value of the entire nintendo world championship 
holy shit blast ball. Like, this was before anybody even knew that this was Metroid Prime Federation Force. This was when everybody, you know, like the guy that was doing the main announcing and whatnot just said, are you guys ready for a never before seen game? You know, everybody's thinking, oh my god, this is a world premiere of a Nintendo IP. Holy crap, we're going to be seeing a new Zelda, a new Mario, a new uh, Metroid, you know, who knows? I mean, they did end up seeing a new Metroid. But, you know, everybody's thinking we're going to be seeing something amazing, something that is going to steal the stage away at E3. So everybody's cheering, the crowd is roaring, and the trailer comes up, BLAST BALL! And everything goes silent. Immediately the crowd is just silent. And they come away from the trailer and they show the crowd and everybody's just like, mid-clap, just kind of like, you know, like, that kind of dramatic thing where it's just like... Oh god. <laughs> everything has gone wrong. And it was absolutely hilarious to see. It was so, I mean, it was both hilarious and sad. Because you never, can you imagine being the creator of that game and going from this crowd is hype as hell, they're ready to see a new uh, game, they want to see what's in store for them, and then to just nothing, to like, the fuck are we watching? Like, this is some shovelware free-to-play on Steam shit. What the hell is this nonsense? And it did not do itself any favors in action either. Like, no, nobody cared the entire way through. But then it continued. The fucking, uh... So the president of Nintendo of America, Reggie Fis Ami, or however the hell you pronounce his name, apparently made some challenge at a Smash tournament that he was going to beat, uh... A guy named Hungrybox or whatever, who is a tournament Smash player. A year from now on this very stage, I'm going to kick your ass. And that already was like super awkward and just felt, you know, obnoxiously forced. Like this is not, this is not like true emotion. This is staged as fuck. Like you can just tell. Sometimes some stage shit looks real. But that did not look real at all. It was not sold at all. It looked corny as fuck. And it continued. I mean, it really, I don't know anything about Reggie. I have no idea what he's generally like, if he has a family, but let me tell you, it felt like he went to his 11-year-old son and just took notes while that kid was playing Call of Duty or some shit and was like, oh, that was a good one. Let me write that down. Ooh, fuck your mother. Excellent. Ooh, you never had sex. You were virgin. Excellent. All you do is play games all day. Woo, good job. And then use that for his trash talk against Hungrybox. Because, I mean, this is the Nintendo, this is Nintendo President of America walking up onto the main stage. Millions of people are going to see this. He picks a brand new DLC character that most people have not used yet, have not seen footage of yet. And can't do a fucking thing. Some 500 PP scrub on Street Fighter could have done more with Ryu than what he managed to do on the live stage. The president of Nintendo of America. And he's making his game look like shit. And so then it comes off and you know he's just, he has just embarrassed the hell out of himself and embarrassed the hell out of his game. And just, you know, and it's in front of Miyamoto. Miyamoto was there at the Nintendo World Championships. Like the grandfather of Nintendo was there watching this fucking waste of time, absolute embarrassment of everything. And he still, I mean, he he embarrassed himself and he embarrassed his game. There's no other way around it. And then he comes around and, you know, the trash talk continues and whatever. And Hungrybox is good at it, obviously. You don't get, you don't really get to be a good fighting game player without at least becoming passable at trash talk. There are some people that still absolutely suck at it. Uh, but you, at least, you tend to get pretty good at trash talk if you're involved in fighting games. And then fucking Reggie. Well, you know what? I run a company for 16 hours a day. You just sit on your ass and play video games for 16 hours per day. Motherfucker, that's your video game. That's your video game that you are sitting there insulting somebody for playing it. You're the president of that company. Well, I guess you're the representation of that company in this country. But still, <laughs> you just shit on anybody who spends any decent amount of time playing your game that they love and adore and give their money for and you just took a massive steaming dump on them 
Are you kidding me? How are you a CEO? Like, that was just, that was so sad. That was pathetic. So, like, <laughs> I just, that I, I had to note that because of how just pitiful it was. Like, this is the motherfucking president of Nintendo of America reduced to the sayings of a nine-year-old. Like, come on, man. Oh, it, was, it was just sad. But yeah, then Super Mario Maker came out, and I like that's brilliant. Having that kind of a thing is absolutely brilliant. It's too bad that Little Big Planet beat them to the punch by like ten years. <laughs> but still, better late than never. Um, actually, I get is it is that a second version of it? Is there a regular Mario Maker, or did it just get upgraded? Like, I I feel like there was it was originally just called Mario Maker. And then they added more to it, and now it's called Super Mario Maker. I'm not sure on that. But anyway, that's beside the point. <laughs> Whew, that was, I mean, it that kind of just highlighted the, the entire showing of Nintendo's E3, where it was just like, you have some good ideas here or there, but they are overshadowed by far by just the terrible ideas. And Nintendo got shit on left and right in regard to their whole E3 showing. And it's an absolute shit. Like, I don't need to get into it anymore. I've already gotten into it. But it's still just... <laughs> Whew, that was... It's not exactly making me want to walk out and go buy a Wii U. Let me just let me just put it that way. So anyway, let's keep moving along. Street Fighter V. After further kind of watching more and more of it. Because, you know, obviously if you watch the Street Fighter V events, I didn't get to watch all of them because obviously I was working myself or I was trying to catch other stuff. They did have, like, Capcom Fighters uh, Twitch stream was basically live with Street Fighter V footage all weekend long. So, like, if you wanted to see Street Fighter V, you got plenty of Street Fighter V. Kudos to them for thinking about that. Like, that's an amazing way to hype your game, is to actually, you know, show footage of it and shit. Kudos to them. But, um, there wasn't much Nash. Like, there was a hell, there was a whole hell of a lot of Birdie, whole hell of a lot of Ryu, decent amount of Kami, but there wasn't really very much uh, Nash or Chun-Li, which are the two characters, like, if I had to pick, it would be a hard sell for me between those two characters, but I would pick one of those two characters, and I would say I'm leaning, I would be leaning toward Chun-Li right now, uh, but Nash is still there, and the reason, it kind of occurred to me why I really, why Nash seems to resonate with me, he's very similar to Brian from Street Fighter Cross Tekken. If you go watch Brian, like, he has some of the same animations, target combo based Brian was very target combo based uh, but yeah a lot of the stuff he does is just like it's they're very it's very similar his neutral stance is I think it's pretty well actually I guess it's really not because Nash is kind of slumped over but Brian did the whole thing where he's kind of just letting one arm kind of dangle a little bit and he has one arm up like he's ready to fight they have the same kind of walk uh, a couple of their normals I couldn't tell you which normals they are but they actually have like the same animation one of them is kind of like a little uh, short hook kind of a deal um, but yeah they just they seem really really similar to me and that is interesting to me because I really enjoyed Brian I really liked uh, Brian from Street Fighter Cross Tekken unfortunately that game didn't do too well it's, I don't know if I've ever really talked about it but it's like because Street Fighter Cross Tekken from the get go was a travesty of a game terribly balanced not really fun at all uh, the whole concept, the whole their whole DLC plan for it obviously hurt it from the get-go. But then the gameplay sucked as well, and so everybody was just kind of like, fuck it, this game is not worth playing. And then they did a patch, the 1.1 patch, and it actually made the game interesting. The game was fun, but they missed their shot. Like, it, after that, it was just, you know, everybody's already written it off, everybody's gone on to other fighting games, and it's done. And it sucked because I got back into it. I wanted to get back into it because I was really enjoying my time with the game. Uh, post patch preview like the patch before or the way vanilla Street Fighter cross Tekken I couldn't stand it. I hated that game, but post patch It was a really fun really enjoyable game and So it kind of sucks that it missed its shot because if they had just spent the time if they had figured this out early and just understood like Our whole DLC shenanigans. They have not been working out for our public image like we have not been representing ourselves Well, let's pull back Let's reevaluate the game, let's reevaluate our plan, and let's come out swinging. Let's come out for real and make this game a success. And they didn't. They did that later after its reputation was already ruined and buried, and that absolutely sucks. But anyway, 
Street Fighter Cross Tekken is old news. There's no reason to get into that. Persona 5, baby! There was a new trailer for that! I was actually, it looked really cool. I liked the trailer for it. Uh, a lot of people are kind of mad because it didn't really reveal any new party members. Like, there were new characters that had not been shown off before. But it wasn't clear whether or not these people were going to be party members, enemies, uh, neutral, who knows what they're going to be. You did see a glimpse, though, of the new uh, Velvet Room attendants. I don't know what they're actually called, but, you know, like the Elizabeth or the Margarets or whatever the hell the male was called in Persona 4 Golden. Um, he was actually in Persona Q. Is that, what, is that all it's called? Is Persona Q? The 3DS game that was like a meshing of Etrian Odyssey and Persona. I didn't really get into it too deeply because it, it it lacked the depth of character customization that Etrian Odyssey, that drew me into Etrian Odyssey in the first place, and so I was kind of like, eh, I got other things to play, so I didn't really, I, I, I have no idea what the guy's name is, uh, what the male attendant's name is of the Velvet Room, but you saw a glimpse of them. It's very weird to me, though, that, so there's been, basically there's been four party members confirmed. You have obviously the main character, then the other two characters, whoever, and then the little cat dude. There's always got to be some kind of animal involved. Uh, but it's really weird because they showed the female character in a cat suit. Like, you know, kind of like a cat woman kind of get up. And it's really weird that they chose that, you know, the female in the cat suit plus a feline party member. Like, you can't mix that up a little bit. You can't go another direction with that kind of, I mean, come on, man. Mix it up, make it unique. Don't just have cats fucking everywhere. This is an Imgur. Son, God, actually, I shouldn't. Talk. I stopped. I stopped. Uh, I don't want to talk about that, but I have stopped going. Oh, that's another thing I actually did want to speak on that I forgot to note down. So recently, so before I was getting all of my gaming news, I used to get all of my gaming news from OneUp.com. That was basically the only place I really went, and that ended up that website ended up closing down. It's been years since that closed down. But after that closed down, I started to go to IGN. And very quickly became very clear that IGN was not a very good website, so I left IGN. And I started using GameSpot. Um, but recently, you know, it's kind of, there. it's this, I, I do this a lot, like I stop using websites when it becomes very clear that they have stopped kind of doing what they used to do and they're more aiming for, you know, like, what kind of headlines can we use? to get the most clicks, whether or not those headlines are intentionally, um, kind of, not fake, but they kind of blow something out of proportion, and then it comes in and it's like, that wasn't anything worth even reading at all, but the title drew you in, right, they, like, they, they know that this article is not really substantial enough by itself to be read, but they want it to be read, they want to get clicks, they want to get the ad revenue, so they use a title that is a little bit... I always I hate when this happens where like I have the word right on the tip of my tongue, but I just can't think about it. Anyway, but when the t misleading, the title's a little bit misleading in regards to what the content actually is. But it's something that's like, oh shit, I need to know about this. And then you get in and you start reading like I didn't need to know about this, and then you click away. That's kind of what they've been doing lately. And same thing with their reviews, like they intentionally give things uh, scores less based upon what the game actually is, like its merits or whatever, and more based around like what's gonna get people in here and mad at us so like batman arkham knight got a seven uh the dmc remake got a six i think you know stuff like that where it's like this game clearly didn't deserve that low of a score but let's just give it that low of a score because people are gonna come in and they're gonna get mad in the comments and who gives a shit we're gonna get the ad revenue so let's do it so i kind of i stopped um going to that and so i've been looking for a new website to get my gaming news and I was hoping you all would have some uh, some ideas about where I should go because I have the two that I've started looking at are Polygon and Destructoid but I don't know how effective they are if they're if you know if there's better stuff out there but yeah so as long as not IGN, GameSpot, or Kotaku will talk let me know if there's anything else that you think you know like if you if you have a personal preference for your site for all gaming news that is not either Polygon or Destructoid since those are the two that I've gone and uh, started looking at myself so I'll be able to figure those out on my own or that aren't the three I already mentioned that I do not believe are worth uh, bothering with for the aforementioned reasons of they don't really supply much actual gaming news and more try to do things in order to get 
ad revenue versus trying to actually talk about gaming. Uh, so yeah, like I said, just please let me know about that. And that's basically all I had to talk about in general because I need to get back to this fucking level where the enemy is not better. He's not better, but <laughs> they die anyway. Goddamn special skills RNG bullshit. Son of a bitch. Fuck everything.